That, that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're here. I'm here. So, uh, and this is not scripted, okay? But we had this amazing conversation, at least from my point of view, sitting over well, just after having coffee. Uh, can you tell us something? You you weren't raised around horses. I mean, you weren't a, a, didn't ride horses really. When did you start riding horses, and when did this whole thing begin? This yes, go into. I moved to Charleston with my wife in 1962. I was a city boy. I knew nothing about horses. The only horse I'd ever ridden was a little pony out in some guy's pasture that we snuck on as kids and rode them. And the guy got so mad he came out with a shotgun and we hit the road, I'm telling you. Ran all the way across that pasture, hit a barbed wire fence, tore up my jeans, tore up my legs, and lost a shoe. <laughs> One time, that was enough of that. Anyway, my wife has been around horses all her life. Her father owned horses. She learned to ride as a young girl. Every little town had a horse show at that time. Charleston had a horse show. Tyson had a horse show. East Prairie had their own horse show. And they would ride in competition, kind of like, in a horse show. And Dorothy Ann grew up doing that. So she was very experienced, and I was very un experience. And that first horse they put me on was kind of a nag. You know, they didn't trust me on one of the good horses. So I rode that nag for a while and I thought, how in the world can they possibly enjoy doing what they're doing? And then, after a while, they put me on a good Tennessee walker. And I realized what the enjoyment was. A Tennessee walker is designed by birds and by blood to walk very, very smooth, whether he's in a fast trot or whether he's in a walk. And he was a plantation horse, originally trained to ride for a, a plantation owner who could ride all the way along on his horse and never get tired. So I couldn't do that with him. About two hours ago, I might rearrange his tail. But they have a different motion in their legs. They don't go up and down. Their hips move forward and back. So your head, if you're on a good one, will stay perfectly still, never move. And you can ride and just hold the reins gently in your hand, and you guide the horse with your little finger. Just pulling and tugging a little bit. They have a very sensitive mouth. So I learned a little bit about horseback riding in that way. So how about breaking horses? Because you've done some of this as well. I've broken several horses. We used to breed horses, and we would have colts. And a lot of people ask us, what do you do with your horses when they get old? And Dorothy and I would simply say, we burn them and we back them. <laughs> so if somebody digs up my pasture in a couple of hundred years, they're going to think we either had a cult or some awful sick people with other horses dogs and goats all buried in my pasture. But when a colt gets about a year old, they're big enough to ride pretty much. And I bought a round pin, which is a series of gates that make a circle. And you have an entrance. And a horse can't get away from you in that. He can only run around in the circle. He can get maybe 30 or 40 feet over there, but he can't break away and get to a corner of a pasture or something where you can't possibly catch them. So that's one of the best training devices I ever owned. And you start out by, like you said, we put a bridle on a horse for maybe a week or two weeks so we could get our hands on them, pet on them, love them, and get them used to us and liking us. So they more or less trust us. And you put them in the round pen, and I had a gentle whip, which I would use to keep them moving. And you start them in a circle. Now they, they're pretty frisky, you know, they can go. And pretty soon they'll begin to get tired. You stand out in the middle of the circle with a treat or something in your hand. And eventually that horse will stop and look at you. And when they start coming towards you, you know you've got them then. Because they'll eat the treat, they'll trust you, they'll be relaxed. And that's part of the whole process of training the horses. Countless repetitions, countless repetitions. 
or they are secure in what's going on around them. After a while, you can put a bridle on them and run them again. Then you can put a saddle on them. Now, they don't like that saddle when they first get it on. They'll buck like crazy broncos going around that pen. But when they find out, I can't get rid of it, and it's not going to hurt me, they relax and accept the saddle. When they get used to that, you take them over to the fence, excuse me, to the gate, and tie them up. And then I would climb up on the gate and put my foot in the stirrup and just apply pressure. And get on them, just apply pressure. So they got used to that weight. Once they got used to that weight, then you throw your leg over them. And you don't try to ride them, you've got them tied up. You just let them get used to the weight. You learn them from you. They love you, and you love them. Eventually, you're so secure with them that you untie them. And I've never, <coughs> ever, in 60 years of riding horses, been bucked off a horse. And I, I'm proud of that, because that's, I've ridden a lot of different horses, but I've had a few of them try to get me off, but I've managed to stay with them. You have to grab hold of their mane. You can't hurt a horse by grabbing hold of their mane. And that's why you secure yourself. And it's also the same way you mount it, is to put your foot in the stirrup, grab hold of the mane, and pull the rug. They're not hurting you. Know? So that's my experience in training horses. Mr. Charlie, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. This is what's hard for me to do. I know, and I'm right.